friends this is an exciting time of year a time when we're getting ready to get geared up to start the season here on the homestead with the garden and the greenhouse but at the same time I feel really really overwhelmed because my list of do's is pretty long it's like I use this book here it's really helpful but I was like oh there's so much to do and so little time to do it in so the best thing I can do is just try to write them down prioritize and just do what I can. Today we're gonna to be working in the greenhouse. Lacey's in here with me. Uh, still continuing the project that I have been working on before with this raised bed here. We added another course of block and I'm gonna be adding some more soil to it. So as I'm doing that, there's some unwanted plants that we're gonna take out of there. Actually, what's growing in there? Purple dead nettle. Yeah. Everybody thinks it's a weed, which I guess it can be considered a weed, but it's totally edible. Don't do like Sailor did. She ate too much of that and was not enjoying it. <laughs> it's a little fuzzy, but other than that, it's actually good um, cooked a little bit more, like sauteed with some butter and garlic. That's what she said. She ate uh, a number of leaves and was like, oh, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> if you can get out what you want to harvest from there, but just kind of take out uh, all the rest, that way we can clear it up for cilantro and uh, some other things we plan on planting okay. and uh, one of the things I'm thinking of doing here I'm thinking of adding yet another course of block but I'm not sure I want to know what you think and you guys can let me know in the show notes below but I think I'm going this direction I'm thinking about putting strawberries planting them in the block either this way or like this way and this kind of block is what is that called a bond bean block is that a yeah, bond bean it's block? a bond bean block. So I was thinking if I could plant them, do the ends like this with the block capping them off, and then just plant the strawberries all down in the course of block of the bond bean. That way it'd be easy to manage the strawberries, and I could also run a line of drip tape in there as well. Um, what do you think? I don't like that idea, only because I saw how much strawberries put runners out last year and they've like taken over that whole bed out there and i don't want anything you know going down into our, our main bed and getting in there yeah these strawberries that we've gotten from stark brothers have been very very prolific and they, they in addition to producing a lot of fruit they have really started just growing i'll show you just a second out there but uh, I really like strawberries. It's one of my favorite things to eat. And I was thinking if I did them in the bond beam here, uh, that we could control and manage it better from them spreading and then grow our other stuff in this main area here. So that's at least what I'm thinking. Because one of the things that early on when I started gardening, I was like, I really want to learn to grow strawberries. And now I'm at the point where I can grow strawberries more. I want to figure out how the best way to do it. So maybe we'll just think about it a little bit more. But I am going to go ahead and bring in a lot more soil because we're going to continue to build this up. We filled up the soil already. It's pretty pretty deep down there. Going all the way down to the bottom. But I want to go even deeper. So that way we got some really deep soil and we can get some really nice root systems going there. But uh, we got some work to do. Hey Josiah, you're almost finished with your reading for today. Can you come yep. help me out with shoveling? Mm-hmm. How many more pages you got there? Hmm. One, two, three, four, four more pages. Four more pages? Yep. All righty. Well, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to go ahead and get started and just hop right in with me when you can. We're going to be doing some shoveling again. Okay. You ready for it? Yep. <laughs> and as we were just mentioning, here is the bed of strawberries that we were talking about. And as you can see, strawberries are growing everywhere. <laughs> They've pretty much taken over this whole bed, even though we only grew them in like two rows here. They're like the whole bed now. So we're gonna have to figure out what to do about that so we can better manage them. And it's still kind of low to where 
I wasn't able to really see all the different fruits that were growing on there just because of the way that the plants were. So one of the things I was thinking with the bond beam, maybe we can even duplicate that somewhere else, in addition to the, the greenhouse, is having it to where they grow kind of branch out a little bit outside the, uh, the bond beam block so that way we can see the fruit on them just a little bit better. But uh, still thinking that through. This gorilla cart here, we have two of them actually. It's really handy to have on the homestead. We can pull them with the lawn tractor or we can disconnect them and pull them by hand. And they make, they alleviate and help out with so many different tasks that we're doing here. So we'll bring Lacey one here for, there you go, putting. Thank you. We pulled up unwanted plants in there to dead nettle. Chickens are gonna love this by the way. Yeah. And I'm gonna use our other gorilla cart to transport some of the buckets that we're gonna be shoveling compost in to fill up a block raised bed. All righty, I'm pulling compost from two different areas, but this area right here is like stuff of gold because this compost pile right here it was bigger but we've gradually been taking from it but over the winter the chickens have really been helping me to make this a compost pile of gold and what i mean by that is there's all kind of stuff that was in here that's broken down that will provide good nutrients for our plants there's things like chicken and duck feathers in here food scraps chicken and duck blood from when we process some of our meat birds before and it's just some really good stuff like I'm looking forward to using it and uh, oh also in addition to that chicken manures in there as well as well as some leaves and uh, also some pine shavings from when we were raising the chicks so really excited about that so we're gonna be shoveling from here also, when I'm using the Gorilla Cart, one of the things I like about it in conjunction with using square buckets is I can fit six buckets in here and fill those buckets up and I can just easily transport them anywhere on the homestead. Pretty easy. Another thing is, whenever you're using a wheelbarrow or a gorilla cart, set it up in the direction that you're going to be going in when you're taking your load. No need to waste excess energy trying to turn around a heavy load after you fill it up. So now I just pull out this way. I'm pretty much done here weeding out all these weeds out of this garden bed. But I did want to go over some of these weeds, as we call them, um, that were in here. This is purple dead nettle, like I had mentioned earlier, and it is edible. And one way you can identify this is the stem is square, so it's in the mint family. And the leaves, they point down with these purple little flowers, if you can see them right there. Now there is one where the leaves go up and the flowers go up and that's called hen bit and that's totally edible too, but this is purple dead nettle. So some other things that we're growing here in uh, the garden are cleavers. If you see this, let me see if I can get it to do it. Cleavers cleave to you. That's why they're called cleavers. They have these tiny little spines and they will just hang on to you. And cleavers are totally edible too. 
You can eat cleavers. Oh, well, it was a whole bunch of chickweed. Chickweed just mats up and grows everywhere. Chickweed, there are a few different kinds, but the one that um, is best for eating is the one with the white flowers right there. It's hard, it's bright out here, so I don't know if you can see that. But they have tiny little white flowers. They have tiny little leaves that um, a lot of them normally say look like have mouse ears for leaves. So there's another big weed growing out here. And one other that I know you know what it is. And it's dandelion. Did you know that dandelion is edible? You can eat the flowers. Um, you can eat the leaves, especially in the spring whenever they're tender. And dandelion gets its name from its leaves. Dandelion, the dente of the lion, lion's tooth is what it's called in some places. So pulled that out too because we don't necessarily want a whole bunch of dandelions growing in the greenhouse. But it also is medicinal too. The root you can uh, clean off and brew it up in a tea and it's a good diuretic. So there's lots of stuff that people consider weeds and unwanted plants that actually have a lot of benefits to you. So the next time you're thinking about cleaning out your weeds, just remember, maybe you can eat those too. Oh, and one other thing. So whenever I was pulling out all this dead nettle and all these other things, look at the root system that's going on here with this purple dead nettle. Now this is amazing because what these roots do is aerate your ground so you get more water flow and it's a lot lighter and all these places that I pulled it out of it's much easier to dig into and you know I mean that's just that's by design <laughs> these plants are put here by design and we are called to tend and keep and you know if we work with the plants and not against them just think how much more we can accomplish. So letting dead nettle grow in the winter time is not a bad thing for your soil. Just try to make sure you remove it before it goes to flower and goes to seed. So just maybe a couple little tips for you there. If you have any other questions for me, let me know. I'm getting ready to take these to the goats because I know they would really enjoy this. Well, that was a pain getting out of the greenhouse. <laughs> it's like, don't record that. Oh, Mike didn't set me up exactly how he normally does and gets everything turned around. <laughs> oh, anyway, we're heading up here to the goats because I know they're really, really going to enjoy all this green stuff. They love, you know, their hay and alfalfa, but they really enjoy getting the good green stuff. They're excited to get greens. I'm just make my way on over here. And I already see Olga Yay! is super excited. <laughs> and Helga's at the fence now. Wobble, 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 here they are. Wobble, 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 wobble. <laughs> you want some greens, ladies? <laughs> you want some greens? Huh? Uh-oh.
think they're enjoying it, don't you? Yep. We're done with that. Now, we go over here and see if Mike needs some help carrying some dirt down to the greenhouse. Alrighty, y'all done feeding the unwanted to the goats? Yep. <laughs> Thank you for helping mommy out. You must have finished your reading, right? Yep. Alright. Well, I've done about seven or eight loads of this already. And I think I'm ready to tag somebody else to transport it over there. So, would you be willing to drive the lawn tractor over there and transport it over there for me? Yeah. There we go. So, our philosophy with homeschooling is. We do it indoors, but we also, it extends to outdoors as well and the various tasks and things that they learn to do. Whether it be things like learning to drive a lawn tractor or working with the animals and doing chores. Homeschooling and school in general and learning, that's what we need to be thinking about. Learning is just deeper than just books and learning indoors. All right, well go ahead and get the lawn tractor for me. I appreciate you helping mommy out. Did he do a good job? He did do a good job. He likes getting in with the goats. And he even brought me a chair over to sit down with the goats. All right, well thank you for knocking that out in the greenhouse. You're welcome. We're gonna keep plugging on. And um, I think I am gonna move forward with using the bond beam for the block for the strawberries. I'm really wanting to do that. I think that might be the route to go. That's fine. Like if we're gonna do it in there, that's the way I would wanna do it. I don't wanna do it in where they can really travel super far. Making it happen. Nope, don't wanna get my neighbors in there too much. That is our neighbors. So I don't want anybody watching the video when we accidentally record their house in the background thinking that we don't live in the yurt, that we live there instead. No, that's just neighbors. And we have a number of our loads that we have or compost and different things dumped off and it just happens to be right here in front of their house. So hopefully they don't think I'm paparazzi or something carry around the camera trying to record some of their private parts of life. But no, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> so yes and that is not our house we do actually live in the yurt like you saw at the start of the video you've been doing a little belly splash into the lead pile right over there show me how it's doing again so everybody else can see <laughs> oh. you like to do it too micah you, you came up cameo appearance I must be honest, I did that when I was a kid too. What about you guys? <laughs> Let us know. Yay. One thing to keep in mind though, is this will be a compost pile. So before you jump in, you may want to make sure there's no food scraps or yuckiness in there that's gonna get on you. I think mommy would appreciate you not doing that, right? <laughs> Let's yeah. not get super yucky, yeah. <laughs> So as you can see, there is a difference in the quality of the soil that I'm adding. See, this is a little different than what I was bringing from the chicken manure, or the chicken pile. The golden chicken compost pile. So, granted this should work together and just blend, and just make some really good stuff. We'll get some worms in here too, and they'll just help just really blend it up and make some good stuff. So compost will help break down some of the clay that we have in here as well. At least that's the plan. It should happen. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get some bond beam and put them right along here on our next course. And 
and then uh, hopefully we we'll get the strawberries planted in here before it gets too hot on. With homesteading, there are a number of days that require us to do a lot of work to accomplish the projects and tasks that we have. And if you're not used to working hard and doing laborious tasks, you better get used to it or your homestead won't be very successful. Some people are amazed that I no longer exercise or go work out at the gym because I get all the physical exercise that I need from what we do on our homestead. Yet, in addition to the exercise, homesteading also is a worthwhile and rewarding lifestyle and undertaking. Each day, I have the opportunity to connect to the natural world, outdoors, and creation, as well as connect to my family. We not only live together, we also work together, play together, and even learn together like teaching Josiah here how to look to the left and right before he crosses with the lawn tractor. Each year we try to grow and produce more and more here. And I'm really excited about growing more of my favorite foods like strawberries. And after all the work that has gone into putting this bed together, I'm super excited to see what it will produce here. So make sure you stay tuned to see how things grow. I also transplanted leeks, tomatoes, and lettuce in the inner parts of this bed. And Micah even helped me water it. 